Welcome back Compounders, it's Friday. And so as we said on Wednesday, where we presented the video on industry analysis and the five forces theory, today we're going to apply this theory on a specific industry, which is the airline industry. And so as we usually do, we're going to go through one slide that's been prepared by Guy, and we're going to see how we can apply actually the theory that we have seen on Wednesday to this specific industry. This is an example on how to apply Porter's five forces to the Ireland industry. We are going to evaluate each factor in each force and we are going to try to assess whether or not the factor is active. Of course, this will be my analysis. So when I will check or not whether a factor is active, whether or not it is limiting the force, this is an assessment that is partially subjective, so you may have another idea and you can go back to the framework and try to redo it according to what you think. And uh, finally, maybe we have the same conclusion or maybe we arrive at a different conclusion. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to review each factor and I'm going to add a check mark if the factor is active or present, so it is limiting the force or I'm going to add an X mark in case the factor is not present, it's not active. So let's start, for example, with the threat of new entry. Are there high regulatory requirements and many rules to enter the airline industry? And I would say yes, so I would add a check mark. Economy of scale. So the question that we have to think about is, is there an economy of scale at play in the airline industry? So can you have a profitable company with just a small fleet? This can be true or not, but for example, some of the costs are spread out. So administrative marketing costs and so on, they're spread all over the company. So having a larger fleet maybe is better. So maybe there is some economy of scale. I would add a check mark. Product differentiation and brand. So I would say that there is not. There's no real product differentiation among airlines, so I add an X mark. Is there IPR, so intellectual property rights or patents? No. Are there high capital requirements? Yes. To start an airline, probably one needs to invest a lot of money up front, so this may limit the threat of new entry. Are there high switching costs? I wouldn't say so. So in this case, we have three check marks, three X marks. So in theory, if there is at least one X mark and that factor is very big, then we know that the force is strong. In this case, I would say that the force is strong so that the threat of new entry is high because there is no product differentiation. And uh, even though the high capital requirements are present, essentially anyone with enough money can start a new Ireland. So I would say the threat of new entry is high. If we go to the bargaining power of suppliers, in this case, I found in my view that there are all X marks. We can probably discuss about it, but I think that overall that force is very strong. So the bargaining power of supplier is very, very high. For example, commoditized supplies goods, the suppliers for the airline industry, for an airline, are the manufacturers of the airplane. Since the airplanes are very complex to make, they for sure are not commodities. So commoditized supply goods is not active. Ease of backward integration is not present. An airline cannot just decide to make the airplanes on its own if it's necessary. It has to buy them essentially, because it's not easy to make them. So it's not present. Concentration of customers for the supplier, so from the point of view of the supplier, is not true. Boeing and Airbus can sell to all the airlines in the world, and there are tens, if not hundreds, of big airlines. So there's no concentration of customers. Fragmentation of suppliers, again, is not true, is not present. So overall, the bargaining power of suppliers is very strong. If we go to the threat of substitutes, we can think, are there alternatives to flights or not? So this depends on the kind of travel that we are thinking about. For regional airlines, this may be a problem because in some parts of the world, there are alternatives and it's trains or it's uh, cars if the price of oil is not too high. And again, 
even if the substitute is present, we have to check is the price high for the substitute. I would say yes, because even for regional flights, even when and where there's an alternative, such as train of car, it's often the case that the alternative is more expensive. I would say that the threat of substitute is low, especially for non-regional airlines. If we go to the intensity of rivalry, so the competition in the industry, the only factor that I put a check mark on is the oligopoly. So typically the airlines are few for each geography, but this also depends on the geography. So for example, in the US, this is for sure true, but in Europe, the market is more fragmented. So even this may be not true in Europe. All other factors in my view are not present. For example, uniqueness of product is not true. Low fixed costs, operating leverage. This is for sure not active because the fixed costs are pretty high for an airline and uh, they want to operate at full capacity. Customer locking and network effects. In my view, they're not present even though they try. They try to partner with credit card companies or they try to offer miles and ways to increase the loyalty of customers. But actually then for most people, we just buy the cheapest flight. Are there multiple niches and segments? I wouldn't say so. And is the industry growing a lot? Not. So Typically, an island, in order to grow, it has to gain market share from another island. So overall, I would say that the competition is extremely high. And then finally, we have the bargaining power of buyers. I wouldn't go there. In my view, it's weak. But the point is that overall, I identified at least three forces that in my view are strong and two of them, in my view, are very strong. And so this is enough to conclude that the returns for this industry are low. And of course, we can check this. So over the very long term, the iron industry had very hard time to increase profits. So typically, the profit margin is very low. The return on capital employed or invested capital is relatively small. And the Ireland's typically have a lot of debt. Even before COVID, there were a lot of challenges. So this is the basis for the analysis. The idea is that when we know this, we have the data on the returns and margins. We have a theoretical understanding of why this is true. Then we can, for example, try to assess whether the forces or some of them or which ones are strengthening and what are the forces that are weakening. In this case, since the analysis in my view is relatively clear and the data is backing the idea that uh, there are a lot of challenges for this industry, I wouldn't even look at Ireland as possible investments. But suppose that we have another case where the analysis is more nuanced and maybe there are no clear, very strong, very weak forces in it. Then in that case, it may be valuable to go deeper and try to understand whether these forces are going to a direction of further strength or actually the industry is changing. Great guy, thanks. And actually, just to try it and also, you know, as a, as a joke, as you also have read from the title, at the end, now we are going to be asking ChatGPT, specifically ChatGPT4, to do the same, basically to challenge Guy's analysis and see basically which one is better, right, Guy? So we can go to ChatGPT. It's actually pretty fast. And as you can see here, Guy has asked, write in table form the Porter's five forces analysis for the airline industry. For each force, list the major factors affecting the force and state whether the specific factor is strengthening or weakening the force. For each force, state if the force is overall strong or overall weak. And ChatGPT4 was able to write down or assemble this table where you can see we have the columns for force, major factors affecting the force, strengthening or weakening overall strength. And for example, if you go and look for threat of new entrants, the major factors affecting this force are high capital requirements, strong brand recognition of existing airlines, economies of scale, and high regulatory barriers. And all of these four elements are weakening, and so the overall strength of this force is weak. 
And so actually, guys, this is in a disagreement, right? We a little bit about what you said. And then we can keep going. We have the bargaining power of suppliers. So for example, we have limited number of aircraft manufacturer, Boeing, Airbus, this strengthening. Then we have high switching costs between supplier and this also strengthening. Limited numbers of fuel suppliers, strengthening. Skilled labor, pilots, mechanics in high demand and strengthening. So overall, this one is strong. Then we have bargaining power of buyers, price sensitivity of customers, this is strengthening, availability of alternative travel option, train, car, bus, this is also strengthening, easy access to price comparison tools, strengthening, frequent flyer programs and loyalty schemes, this is weakening, so overall this is also strong. And then we have threat of substitute products. We have availability of ISP trains, strengthening, video conference, reducing need for business travel, and this is also strengthening, private jets and air taxes, this is weakening, and development of new transportation technologies such as Hyperloop, electric planes, and this is also strengthening. So overall, this one, the threat of substitute products, is moderate. And then finally, we have the rivalry among existing firms. We have high fixed costs and low variable costs, which is strengthening. Intense price competition, strengthening. Industry growth and expansion opportunities, weakening. And differentiation through service offerings and customer experience, which is also weakening. So overall, this is strong. So basically, Guy, we can say that even though you are basically disagreeing with ChatGPT about the threat of new entrants, because you had said this was also strong, overall, you are actually in agreement with it. Because, you know, as we have seen in the video on Wednesday, all these forces have to be weak for returns to be high. So overall, the analysis at the end of ChatGPT4 is aligned with yours, even though force by force, we can see a little bit of difference here and there. And overall, I have to say, I mean, this is the first time that we tried such a service. It was kind of like an idea that we had, and uh, I think it was worth it. Just to basically see what this new ChatGPT, this ChatGPT4, by the way, is capable of doing and whether or not this is going to become kind of like, you know, a very interesting tool to have among your existing tools in life. And more specifically, specifically since this is a channel about investing and finance in finance. And I think that this could be actually a pretty hard topic to do, right? I mean, we are asking a specific question and a specific analysis to ChatGPT framed within the five forces model by Porter. And actually the result has been pretty impressive, even naming, guy, as you were saying, the competitors, right? And some of the airplanes producers such as Boeing or Airbus. So overall, it was a pretty impressive, I would say, performance. And I think we're going to keep testing this in the upcoming video wherever we have some ideas where it could be fun to try at least. And this concludes also the video for today. If you liked it, you can consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And we're going to see you next week. Have a good weekend. Bye bye.